I am Mark Silver. I'm a published photographer. I've published four books. This is Advancing Your Photography, named after the show. Let me introduce you to an old friend of mine. Our guest, Fila Kunz, is a portrait photographer. He lives in New York City, but he was born in East Germany and raised in England. His recent projects include a focus on scientists, explorers, environmentalists to elevate their standing in society through photographs. His well-known The Lighting Series is an online class that has helped over 11,000 photographers become confident studio photographers, which is something we're going to be talking about. Felix, it's so great to have you on Advancing Your Photography. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely, Mark. We're going to really focus on lighting with you. But first of all, Felix, tell me what is it that really drives you? What motivates you as a photographer? I think for a lot of photographers, the biggest struggle you have at the end of the day, if you, when you get far enough into it, isn't the camera, it isn't the lights. It's what do you choose as subjects in front of the camera? Yeah. Everyone's had the experience where they open a fashion magazine and they just go, who the hell took this picture and why were they hired for it? It's garbage. <laughs> However, what makes the pictures great is that these people have access to great models, great clothes, and uh, great locations through a big fashion magazine. The, so when you get further along in your career, what ends up happening is you get access to things and you're much more concerned with what's in front of your camera than the camera itself. You know, Richard Indeed. Avedon talks about the camera just gets in the way of what he's trying to achieve. And so... In the last couple of years, I've really been focusing on scientists, explorers, um, adventurers, like you mentioned, and trying to get into photographing the people that are bringing society forward, that are advancing mankind, and um, kind of telling a little, little tiny piece of their story, and really focusing on who's in front of my subject, uh, in front of my camera, um, so I can kind of tell a story that lasts, you know, I want to make pictures that are worth more in 50 years than they are now in their social impact. What are the key things that you use every time you pick up a camera or even before you pick up one? Like, how do you approach so, a shoot? How do I approach a shoot? So the first thing is I'm always going to be hoping, for, if I'm in the studio, I'm going to make sure I have very little ambient light or just enough ambient light to get focus. Okay. Um, because I want to, so when I take that, uh, I always take a test frame when I get into the studio, I set the camera usually at uh, aperture 5.6. Um, my shutter speed is going to be like 180 and my ISO is going to be 200. And I'm going to take a test shot and I'm just going to see how much ambient light is there in the studio. Okay. Um, you know, that's like people write me and they ask, we have this online community called Lighting with Felix Kunz on Facebook. It's a group and a lot of people ask like, oh, I don't know. I took a picture with artificial light and I don't know how much ambient light. So the light that's already there from the sun or whatever is in yeah. my picture. And I said, well, just take a photograph with the same settings of your camera without your flash firing or without any, um, yeah, any of the light that you intend to be on the subject and see if that's black or barely visible, then you're in a good place. So in the studio, right. that's what I do. Um, and it's a really easy tip. You want to with, you know, I like kind of the way I teach also is take it one step at a time. So if you right. arrive in the studio and you're setting up a light, you want to make sure that you have a blank slate. So set your camera at 5.6, ISO 100 or 200, depending on what you what your camera's native ISO yeah. is. And then um, my shutter speed is usually at 180th of a second. And if I can get a black frame at those settings, I'm good to now set up my lights. I don't do nice. anything until I have that. Okay. So if you have a lot of sun beaming into a studio, for example, you're going to have a lot of light on your subject that you can't control. Right. You know, so you want to maybe block that off or start like that. So that's a really clean slate. And then when I arrive at the studio, so what I, what I tell photographers, so we have all lighting classes online and, um, you know, I usually shoot usually, uh, with one light, I shoot very rarely with just one light unless I'm on location, but what I like to tell photographers is that once you've got a light set up, the the instinct is just to point that light directly at your subject and take a picture. And I know 99% of people who try this in the studio immediately become discouraged because it will look 
just absolutely <laughs> <laughs> atrocious. Horrible. Um, horrible. So, I mean, there's a lot we can get into with lighting, but the biggest tip I have is the solution out of that is get get yourself out of the mindset of just pointing the light directly at your subject and realize that the light is in a 360 degree three dimensional space. So it can move in any which way. Right. And the exercise for anyone that wants to learn lighting, they would not need to take a class. They would not need to do anything else is set up a light, get your subject and put them in one place where they're looking at the camera, get a friend, sister, husband, wife, Someone dog. who's willing to sit there. Dog is tricky because they don't. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Because the fur absorbs all the fab, uh, the color, you know. Yeah. Um, and if you were to just take the light and move it inch by inch in all different places, all around the subject, and just see what the differences are as you do it, right? Every time you take a picture, you can see the difference. Then you could angle it up higher, angle it down lower, bring it up higher. There is an infinite amount of positions that a light can be. And people tend to get stuck in pointing it directly at the subject. And if you did that, yeah. like it's a great exercise. That is down. really good. You know, yeah. Felix, there's a book called Lighting for Television and Motion Picture. I don't know if you've seen yes, it. Yes, I've heard of this. Quite technical, but in yeah. that book, he makes that same point. You have a sphere, you move the light within that, you know, you can move it anywhere within that sphere and you should watch what's going on. And that's yeah. the most obvious thing about light is look at it, right? I mean, yeah. but see, what, see shape, what it's doing. Exactly. But, you know, I have to say that when I was learning, people were like, oh, you should just be able to see the light. And I realized I didn't know what I was looking for. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I was like, well, what is good light? And that is something you can't necessarily teach. But mm. doing an exercise like that is you start to see like what the differences are, you know? And I find myself, I, I, I do this. I go on light tests with my friends and, you know, other photographers, and we'll just do this in the studio. Even when we, when I buy a new light that has a different shape, I'll try it out the same way to learn it. And then I don't necessarily know which look I'm going for, but I find myself referring back to that test over and over again. Ah, how did we achieve that certain look? Yeah. And you kind of build this vocabulary of, what lighting is and the great thing about that is you don't need to become a mathematician or um you know anointed by god to be a lighting master <laughs> to try that out and you'll really? learn so much yeah so rachel uh asks can you share your lighting ratios i know rachel yeah and i think she's setting this question up because uh i don't do ratios uh -huh. A trick question, because, Rachel. <laughs> it's a trick question. I love it. And it's because, um, and when I used to work for photographers, I found this out. I thought, oh, what's the ratio that gives your light that look? And they're like, I don't have a ratio. Yeah. And then I realized, oh, it's not the ratio. It's just that they respond to what they're looking for, their taste. And that ends up kind of being in the same place. Instead of going, so they're going at it from the creative side instead of the technical side. Right. Because when you get lost in the technical side, you get lost. And you just geek you know? out. Can you define yeah. what a ratio is in case everybody doesn't understand that? So some people would set up one light at full power and another light at another ratio. So they would put the other light at half power in this position. And so imagine you have a studio where you need to create the same look over and over and over and over again. Right. Right, then you would definitely need to know, right, I have one light in exactly this spot, I have one light in exactly this spot, and I know exactly the power of this one, and I know exactly the power of that one. You would end up with a ratio. Gotcha. Right? So those but are the mathematics I'm, that you skip. Exactly, and it, yeah. it's, we don't skip them because you can work those things out for yourself, but it is absolutely possible to go, right, I want a little bit of fill on my shadows, and I want a light that gives it a little bit of direction like we saw with the astronaut picture. Yeah. You can literally walk over to those lights and turn them up or turn them down if they're too bright or too dark. In digital photography, we have that benefit. Yes. And we that's what that we do. Test. So I call the light that gives it direction, I call that the kicker. Okay. Because what I do in my signature light setup is give a broad wash of light and then add 
just a little bit of a kicker light to give it direction. And okay. if you, and it's, it comes from if you were to be in a forest or any situation where the natural light is really beautiful, you're going to, like on a beach, when you have like soft light on the beach, it's filled in yes. from the reflections coming off the water. So you have a broad wash of light and then the sun adds a bit of direction. So I try gotcha. to, that's how I get natural light. And it's so, so, so simple. Well, Sandy, our friend in India asked, uh, leaf shutter versus focal plane shutter versus global shutter, what impact on studio portrait? She's talking about sync speed, which is when you're using strobes, the strobe fires for like one twenty thousandth of a second, right. a really short amount of time. Your uh, shutter speed might be at 180, one 180th of a second, so it's open for just the fraction of a second. And in that fraction of a second, you also need the flash to fire at the right time. And when, so if you imagine you're in a, in a cave, there's no light at all, none. You could have your uh, shutter open for a thousand years and you would not get a single photon of light. Right. right? If you had a flash, you could fire it in any time in that thousand years, right? Any time, and you would get, that's the only photons of light that would um, happen. Now, right. when we bring the shutter speed to be really short, we need to, there's technical things that happen in the camera with how it communicates with the flash that makes sure those two things happen at the same time. That's called sync speed. Right, okay. So cool. I generally set my camera at 180th of a second, because that's what I know from the manufacturer. And depending on what kind of um, shutter you have, that's different by camera, and depending on what lights and triggers you're using also. Well, Felix, this has been amazing. Is there any final tip you want to leave our viewers with to help them elevate their photography, advance their photography, or their lighting? So people who've, who are learning studio lighting with me, this is like I'm giving them the challenge of uh, doing that set up in the studio, like put the one light if you have it and do it, put it in different places and kind of see and I guide them through that. But I, um, it is so hard and I pointed this out to a couple of my friends recently. I'm in New York City, right? I moved here eight years ago. And when I go outside, New York City is almost plaza. It's like, okay, I've seen exactly. it a thousand times. But if I send those pictures to someone in Brazil or Australia, they're like, oh my God, it's New York. And every place in the world has that quality. I'm always interested in like, oh my God, you live in Amsterdam. Uh, I've never been there, but I'd love to see pictures of what life is there, what life is like there. And that's a, that's a viewpoint to adopt because anyone's life is so everyday to them. But as photographers, putting that stuff out is interesting to other cultures. Absolutely. You know, you look at Henry Cartier-Bresson, who is one of my, you know, heroes of photography. You look at his photographs and they're just amazing, right? And you think, yeah. wow, I wish I could take photographs like that. But you have to realize at the time he was capturing those images, that was just normal life. I he mean, lived to, in Paris. He lived in Paris. He came to New York. But that was just you know what everybody was apparently doing it didn't seem unique to them but no. he found those unique images and it's true every one of us can find them in our own backyard literally yeah yeah felix thank you again we will have you back thanks again oh wonderful enjoy thank you mark it's been very fun fantastic take care thank you follow us make sure you follow felix you saw on his instagram Follow me, you'll get updates, um, like, subscribe, <laughs> do all those normal YouTube things. But one other thing, remember to get out and capture your own images of life.